Good afternoon, uh, my name is Tony Harmer, I am a Senior Solutions Consultant at Adobe and I look after the design and mobile ideation segments for the UK. And what you're going to see uh, in this session is you're going to see what we've got in some of our mobile tools, so the ones around uh, design and storytelling, because we actually have a whole stack of things uh, when you go out to all of our different clouds, such as Creative Cloud, Document Cloud, and Marketing Cloud. But I'm in one of our applications at the moment called CompCC, and I'm using this to introduce myself just to begin with, and we're going to come back to this towards the end. So in terms of the mobile tools, we've now got some of these uh, out on Chromebooks. So we've got Lightroom, Draw, Comp, Photoshop Mix and Adobe Sketch uh, becoming available on Chromebook. So most pieces of work begin with a sketch. And this is Photoshop Sketch, a very, very capable tool in which people are building some fantastic pieces of work. In fact, if I show you just a segment from the community gallery, these are things that people have built in Photoshop Sketch and they've done those just in that app. So they're available for phone and for tablet, and I'll just give you an idea of how this works. I'm using the iPad Pro here at the moment, but look at how sensitive uh, this is and how much these actually look like pencil strokes. Yeah, so it's really, really convincing, and of course, that means that you're not so much thinking about you're working with a piece of technology you're just thinking about what it is you want to draw and that's an important part of the creation process of course in a sketchbook in which i'm bringing an idea out i can't do a swipe like that to undo what it is i've just done on some tablets we've also got tools like this watercolor brush and i'm going to use a really strong color here so I'm just gonna brush here like so, and I want you to watch this really carefully and watch what happens. And hopefully you can see that color bleeding out just as if it was on a wet ground. And if I choose another color to work with and brush across that, as you would expect with two wet pigments there, they are merging together. Now, if this was actually a watercolor that I was working on and I didn't want any further interaction with paint that was going to be applied, I'd have to set that to one side and wait for that to dry and then I could paint over the top of it. Well, here, I've got this funky little fan down at the bottom on the left-hand side and when I tap that, that brief flash that you see there, is it drying, it dries in a flash. See, it's incredible. So now I can add other colors to that or other strokes and they won't interact in the same way with the underlying color. So they're really, really convincing tools and they do allow your students and people to actually give rise to real ideas without having to wait around or any of the other things associated with that. So Photoshop Sketch is all about that, about using these tools to work with, and you can add things like image layers here and other sketch layers, so I can bring in uh, something here. So let's just bring in uh, an image. Well, we use this. So this image layer comes in, and I can either use that as something to work from. So if I wanted to, I could have another layer over the top of that, and if I just mute this one down slightly, okay, and I'll just hide the one underneath, you could see how I could actually use this to work on top of, and I could actually use it as a tracing area just there. I'm not tracing that terribly well, but I am using my finger in a hurry. Yeah, so I could work through these things, draw these things out like so, and start to build an idea and then introduce other imagery, okay, to develop my idea yeah, using those things. And I don't just have to get it from things I've captured 
outside already, of course I've got a device here, as a phone does, has a camera on it. So I could actually capture things while I'm on the go, which is amazing if you're trying to record a particular event or a visit, for example, and build something based on that visit. In a similar vein, we have another project or product called uh, Illustrator Draw, and this allows me to create vector-based drawings. So from here, I can draw like so, and I can do things that vector graphics can do, such as fill regions like that very, very quickly. Again, I can bring in imagery to go along with that. I can bring in assets that I've made with one of the apps I'm going to show you in just a moment and a range of different brushes that behave in various different ways. So this gets me to create things that of course have no defined resolution, so they can be used at any size. That's the amazing thing with vector graphics. I mentioned capturing things a moment ago and what I'm gonna show you is Adobe Capture and this allows me to capture shapes and colors and make my own brushes for use in our tools and capture color looks for use in video and in applications like Photoshop and patterns. And so I'm actually gonna use my own camera and I know it's only just after lunch and for this I apologize, but there's me. I know it's terrifying, isn't it? Okay, so at the moment it's just doing me a straightforward repeat, but if I tap one of these other geometric options, then I can start to create patterns like so, and I can pinch to zoom in and capture part of the image there like so. And there's a really good element of discoverability about this that will make it fun for people to use. And as you well know, it doesn't feel like you're actually learning anything if you're enjoying doing it, but you know that you actually are learning something, of course. And then when I save that, that becomes available for use in the apps. So if I go from here at this particular point and I can change the way that the image is in the seed pattern and that will change the resulting pattern like so, right? But I can change all of those things and do various other things to that. And then I can save that out from here. I get a preview of what the actual pattern would look like when it's applied if I tap next, I can save this into one of my Creative Cloud libraries. So if I just save that now, it becomes available in this library and complete subscribers can have access to other options as well, such as this export as option, which allows you to use this pattern tile in other products. They don't have, even have to be Adobe products, but anything that can ingest the tile yeah, it can use them there. So, and there are other image formats as well that you can use with some of these things. So if I go out to shapes, let me show you how difficult it is to capture uh, a shape. So this allows me to capture things that my camera can see. Let's go for this. If I tap on it, it comes across into this optimization screen. And from here, I can do things such as erase the information that I don't want to use here and it only takes me a few seconds to do this all right very very quick to work with and obviously I'm not trying for a perfect job just here just a little bit more work though and I could have made a perfect job of that I then tap next at the top of the screen and what this does now is this then gets traced as a vector shape Okay, so it just becomes a vector. At the moment it's not being smooth, but if I turn smoothing on, it will actually smooth out any bumps and hiccups that I get in there as well. So I'll just tap next, and I've got the image captured at the same time. So if I need to revisit it later on, okay, then I can do that. And bear in mind also, and I'll keep reinforcing this, that while I'm doing this on an iPad Pro, I could just as easily be doing this on the one thing that we've all got with us pretty much uh, every day of our lives, and that's our phone. Yeah? And how many of your students don't walk around with a smartphone these days? Right, so it's there and available to use. It's gonna capture colors that might inspire me. So 
Again, I'm going to use my camera just here, like so. And this, if I freeze the frame, so if I tap on it to freeze it, this is automatically capturing me colors from whatever the camera saw, okay, based on a simple determination at the moment about the things that are brightest around it. Although I can override it also, so if actually what I wanted was uh, a color from somewhere else, so I'll go up to here for this, and if I tap on this color and say, where are you, it will show me, so I can come down and capture something else just there. And when I do that, I can model it still further if I need to, or if I was working on somebody who, working on a project that involved exporting this to the web, and I was working with a colleague or another student that needed to get hex values, they can get that directly from here, even at this point. You might also want to look at things like Photoshop Mix. This is one of the tools that is available uh, on the Chromebook, and this allows me to mix together up to five different input images. So for example, I might want to put myself into uh, another location. What I want to do is cut myself out. Now again, using industrial tools, that's a much more complex operation to do. Yeah? And if you were trying to get somebody to merge, it doesn't have to be a human uh, into a thing. It could be anything that you want to combine together. It involves me learning that tool set. Whereas here, all I need to know how to do is to tap, cut out, okay, and use this smart brush, and then just tell the product exactly what it is I would like to cut out. And basically, you'll see that as I brush around here, it learns about what I'm indicating, and it learns very, very quickly. Now, sometimes it needs a little bit of help and it needs a little bit of refinement, but it is not difficult. And hopefully you can see there that the image data is still here, because remember that this is this kind of thing that would ultimately end up in the Photoshop desktop product. And I could refine this still further. And if I'd made any mistakes, I can correct them there as well. So if I'm happy with that, and for the purposes of this demonstration, uh, I am. And what I want to do, that's actually a great place for me to go. And all I need to do now is drag that down underneath here, and I'm starting to composite these things together and build my own story in this way. So now I've actually got some imagery here. What I'm going to do is uh, save this to uh, one of my Creative Cloud libraries just here, and that will build that file and then send that to the library. I don't have to wait for it to do that. So let's go back to Comp CC, and I'm using this here, which needs a little bit of fleshing out because it's a bit thin uh, on the ground as, uh, as presentations go uh, just there. What it needs, I think, is a bit of a background or some of this stuff to be removed. So we don't need my Twitter handle, so we can rub that out. You know who I am now, so we can rub that out as well. I can add other things with drawing gestures. If I wanted a rounded rectangle, in there, then I can do that. How round, I can push that out like so. And I can pick up a color. And if we go to my library, you'll remember that earlier on, we made this set of swatches just here based on a shot from my laptop. And I think that would be a groovy color uh, to use just there. Maybe I also want to change the color of the type. So again, I can go to that. And I know these two colors go together because they were using an algorithm that's capable of detecting uh, those things. And maybe also I want a couple of other things, so I'd quite like a picture in here. So I'll draw a frame uh, for an image, okay, like so. All right, and then I need an image to populate it with. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is to just smile quickly, look really happy and ecstatic, like you're being totally blown away by, oh, this is amazing. There you go, see, I can use that and drop that in there. Imagine if you're, if you're actually somewhere and you're documenting a visit, again, you can build out a publication that you can use and you've still got people who are in the same environment that they're uh, writing about or recording rather than having a go away, get on a coach, go back to school, go home, come back the following day and then remember all of the different things they've had. Okay, so I can do that. The framing for that isn't great, so I can just double tap on that 
and change the framing just there. And then I might want other things. So maybe I want a paragraph of text just here and it gives me some text to populate that with, which I can then of course over type with my own content. Just double tap and type just there. And finally, I'll need the logo that I captured uh, for you. So what I'm going to do is bring that in as a shape. If I go to my library, here's the shape that I captured earlier on. Okay, that's just been formatted. So I'm gonna drag that into place. Whoops, dismiss that. Drag this into place like so. However, it's not quite the right color. So what I'm gonna do, you know, you probably guessed it, is I'm gonna go back to here and change the color like so. And in a nutshell, given that there's such an array of tools to talk about and so many different things, you can do with them, including me importing the drawings that I do in Photoshop Sketch and Illustrator Draw and way beyond that it's actually an ecosystem in its own right. And there you go, that's it. Thank you very much for watching and I hope it's given you an idea of some of the things you'd be able to do with those tools. Right. Thank you. Cheers, thank you very much.